So last time we looked at a type of compensation called shunt compensation. And this is a form of narrowbanding compensation. And we saw that we end up with quite a large capacitor if we do this. So what we're going to look at instead is using a compensation technique called pole splitting. And the goal of this form of compensation is we're going to try and make omega P1 smaller, our first pole or our dominant pole uh, frequency, while either making omega P2 larger, omega P2 is the frequency of our higher order pole frequency, or keeping it the same. So in this case, our, for our open loop response, our omega P1 frequency will equal the 3 dB frequency for our amplifier, or the half power frequency. And we'll set omega P2 equal to our omega for the closed loop response. And if we do this, we'll end up with a 45 degree phase margin. So looking at our compensation, we're going to use a compensation called two-stage Miller compensation. And with two-stage Miller compensation, we're going to take our model for our operational amplifier that we've used in the past. Our first stage, we're going to treat like a GM. Our second stage, we're going to treat like a voltage gain. And we have our compensation capacitance across this inverting gain stage. Let's make sure to put an inverting sign here. So this is a minus A2. We take our output from the second stage, and we put our input in. In the first stage. Now, what we would note is we have a, a very big output swing at the output, but because A2 is hopefully a very large voltage gain, there isn't much swing at this node. And if there isn't much voltage swing at this node, we can treat this approximately as being a virtual ground. So our current source here causes a current to flow through uh, the capacitor. And the current flowing through the capacitor is approximately equal to Ix. And we know that our output voltage then would equal Ix times the impedance of the capacitor, which would be 1 over SC. Okay, we also know that Ix is equal to GM1 times Vn. And so if we substitute everything in, we can find a voltage gain with respect to frequency, V out over Vn with respect to frequency is equal to GM1 divided by SCC. And if we were to plot this, we would get a response that looks something like this. We'd have infinite gain at DC, and the gain would be rolling off at 20 dBs per decade. Now remember, this transfer function is only valid for very high frequencies. In other words, the kinds of frequencies that we're going to be looking at for where our second pole frequency is. 
And what we're going to try and do is set our closed loop gain so that it intersects this curve at the second pole frequency, omega P2. And if we do this, we'll get a phase margin of 45 degrees. Okay, writing that out, we can say that V out over V in, the magnitude of J omega is equal to GM1 over SCC. And we know that this should equal A closed loop at a frequency corresponding to our target phase margin. So for a phase margin of 45 degrees, we want omega unity loop gain to equal omega at our loop gain T of J omega equals 1. In other words, we're going to set omega unity loop gain equal to omega P2, our second pole frequency. The reason we do this is the phase shift at our second pole frequency should be 135 degrees, which is 45 degrees away from 180 degrees. In other words, we have a phase margin of 45 degrees. So we take our transfer function V out over Vn at J omega 2 is equal to our closed loop gain, which is equal to Gm1 over omega 2 times Cc. And we can solve for CC and find that CC should equal GM1 divided by omega 2 times a closed loop. We could show that if we wanted a phase margin of 60 degrees, we would only need to multiply by a factor what would happen here is omega unity loop gain would equal omega P2 divided by 1.73. And if we substitute everything back in the same way we just did, we would find the compensation capacitance would equal 1.73 times GM1 divided by omega P2 times A closed loop. This makes sense. If we want a larger phase margin, we would need a bigger compensation capacitor, and the compensation capacitor would be bigger by a factor of 1.73. In the next slides, we'll look at a two-stage operational amplifier and size the compensation capacitor accordingly.